Hmm. I can't afford a truck and I can't afford any gas to put in it to go anywhere. But for 500 bucks, I could buy a Yeti cooler and I'll save money on ice. <sighs> Gear up and get outside. The Yeti cooler is loved by some and ridiculed by others, but is the hype or the gripe worth it? Before we empty our wallets, let's unpack it. Yeah. A top complaint, the price. Here's how they stack up compared to some of the competition. Not cheap, but on the flip side, some argue that quality comes with a cost. It is no secret that Yeti coolers weigh nearly as much as their folkloric namesake. Out of about 30 similarly sized coolers I've tested, at 31 pounds, the Yeti Tundra 65 weighs about 20% more than the average. But the same can be said about just about any rotomolded ice chest, and Yeti isn't even the heaviest. All that dense thermal mass, however, is part of what contributes to its ability to keep so cold for so long. <laughs> The bulkiness of Yeti coolers can make them cumbersome to fit in your Subaru, even if they're not as bulky as a Pelican or a Cabela's cooler. Yes, they take up space, but a bit of bulk is worth the bragging rights to many a protein shake enthusiast who probably drives something bigger than a Subaru anyway. For the aforementioned reasons, a Yeti is hard to carry and move around, especially when loaded up with ice and drinks and food and unprocessed deer meat. So maybe you ought to get enthused about protein shakes too to make it a little easier. While Yeti coolers look big, they have relatively little capacity for what you want to put inside. Sort of the opposite of Mary Poppins' bag. And don't forget, you also gotta fill it at least halfway with ice before you put your food and beverages in there. I believe this is a case of where function dictates form. To keep things chilly inside, those insulated walls gotta be thick. Even if that means it only holds as many T-bones as the space shuttle does astronauts. Oh. With all of that, chances are your cheap backup cooler will take more trips to the lake than your Yeti, which will only descend from its throne once or twice a year for bigger trips. Perhaps it's more of a garage ornament, like that treadmill you bought. Yeah. A Yeti can be as sensitive to heat as a hipster's vinyl collection. Too much sunlight and things might just get a little warped. Though this can be avoided, so you should check out my video on things that can ruin a cooler and how not to do that. Yeti's good at keeping things cold, but some other brands last longer. So if you feel like you paid for the best on this point, you might regret it later. Yeah. Their ambiguous advertising, that's their charm. They learned from the French. It's all about the mystery, darling. Don't mind that little number in the model name. It's got nothing to do with capacity. And when it comes to ice retention, they'll never say, I told you so, because they never did. Innovation? Meh. Oh. Yeti likes to keep things the way they are. This is the way. They offer no freebie frills and little new innovation, particularly when it comes to their coolers. Most of their new products are not ones they invented, but rather ones they mimicked, like tumblers, cups, $400 frying pans, and buckets. I mean, coolers and cups with two walls already seemed otherworldly, but a five-gallon bucket that's thicker? Ooh. By golly, wow! <laughs> I mean, a bucket. That's something. I mean... There are buckets, you know, for three, four, five dollars at the hardware store. Those are just not good enough. You got a Yeti bucket that you can pay fifty dollars for. They see a classic outdoor gear item, they do it a Washington better, and they charge a Benjamin Moore. But hey, it works and it's good for business. If you don't like it, you're probably just totes jelly. Totes my goats. Rope handles. Love them or hate them, they've become a signature. If you are one who hates them, Cordova is one of several cooler companies who offer a handle alternative as rigid as a cat's commitment to ignoring you when you call. <coughs> How badly do you want to open that bottle of brew you lugged out into the woods? Hopefully enough to fork out more change for one of Yeti's many add-on bottle openers. Yeti gladly collects nickels, dimes, and big juicy bills in exchange for a small hit of dopamine you'll feel when accessorizing your Yeti like a suburban overlander's garage-fed Tacoma. <laughs> Something else Yetis have in common with those shiny unused jerry cans and rooftop tents is that there's a good chance they're gonna get stolen. Be prepared to write that off as a charitable donation. But as the saying goes, theft is the best form of flattery, I think.
Speaking of flattery, I'd be flattered if you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I thank you. Can I buy a USA made Yeti? Maybe is the best answer you'll get, which won't cut it for those of you who yearn for that consistent homegrown quality like in the olden days. I personally have one Yeti cooler, a Tundra 65, that says it was made in the USA on the box it was shipped in. Meanwhile, my Yeti Tundra haul was made in the Philippines. It's a grab bag of globalism, and personally, I like grab bags. Other coolers often offer a 10 year or even lifetime warranty. Yeti? They're playing hard to get with an average 5 years for hard coolers and only 3 for softies. But fans speak highly of their customer service, so make sure it breaks on time. That drain plug? Yeah, you're gonna lose it. Too bad it's not tethered. But despite the inconvenience, you can probably buy a new one at a local store. Dag Gum it, Yeti! How dare you provide convenience with your reputable brand quality products and now prolific distribution network in a moment when I only wish to make the dissident voices of the interwebs heard.